Hi, Andrew. Hi, Adrian. And hi, Rachel. Thanks for your time today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm here to present SEEK headquarters for you in Cremorne um, for the commercial category. Um, just a contextual photo there from Peter Bennett's drone looking east. Um, just to locate you in Cremorne, um, the SEEK headquarters is pretty much smack bang in the middle of Cremorne now nicknamed Silicon Yarra because all of the tech companies coming into the, to the area. Um, I'll just run you through quickly the timeline. So we, we got involved with SEEK back in 2015, initially helping them to look at their workplace strategy and to help them to plan for growth. They've, they'd been growing as an organisation and they needed a new home. So we started off with a workplace strategy piece, which we worked through with them in 2016. Um, then we put together the RFP for the base building. They then introduced us to Cremorne Properties, who were the owner of this particular site, and we had to do a bit of a beauty pageant to prove that we were the right partner for them. Um, and luckily that worked, and so we started working with Cremorne Properties. So we had two contracts and two clients for the one project. So we ended up doing the workplace strategy and the interior design of the workplace plus the base building as a separate contract. So the base building itself went through town planning mid-18 mid um, and it was completed in mid-2020. There's the um, image of the site. So it's a very large site in, a, in the middle of a very mixed use um, industrial and residential zone. Um, so it's 6,750. We created floor plates that were 4,000 square metres just to give you a sense of the context. Um, obviously, the area had a lot of heritage in it, and that was something that we used from a contextual point of view, from a design perspective, to, to really draw on that heritage. Um, here's a couple of just highline snapshots of um, a few of the stats. So 300 bike parks, 200 cars. Um, they needed somewhere between 15 and 19,000 of the NLA, which they've ended up using all of that. Um, plus, there's a whole lot of amenity on the ground floor that can be converted to things like childcare facilities down the track if need be. So the envelope that planning gave us was a 10 metre high street wall height, um, which and then then a wedding cake kind of design um, or, or envelope, which we didn't really like very much. So one of the things we really really wanted to do was pull the building back from from the edges. So these diagrams just show you a bit of the strategy around that. So we pulled back all on all fronts, um, eight and a half metres on the north, um, seven and six and a half on the, on the west and the south, just to, to give us some space um, from all those residential developments. And then we further set back those roofs to help from a, a, um, an overshadowing and bulk perspective. And that also then um, helped to create this contemporary warehouse um, theme that ran through that was a strong concept all the way through. So that was just a really early sketch kind of investigating how we could create some built form within that envelope that created some regular floor plates. They were really keen on having quite regular floor plates all the way up through the building. So we've got two 2,000 square metre kind of planks around this atrium space in the middle. Um, just a couple of the key design elements. We created this new shared public zone on Blanche Street that's a gift or a, um, a shared um, community space that can be used by both the tenants and the, and the residents. We pulled the building back from Cremorne Street to widen the pedestrian um, edge. We pulled the, um, we, uh, we've created a whole lot of street activation along Blanche Street and Cremorne Street. We've created separate entries for SEEK and also potentially for an alternative tenant if, if down the track the building needs to have multiple tenants. There was an existing brick wall that we retained and restored on the back there. Um, that Those setbacks again, as I mentioned, this shared green space. Um, and the northern northern barn is slightly, slightly larger than the southern barn just to be more um, respectful to the neighbours. We did lots and lots and lots of testing, just some model shots. Um, different facade and rooftop window module studies um, and then a whole lot of ground and retail um, studies as well. And then there's just an image of the original render that we did for the entry. Sorry, it's just frozen for some reason. Um, we did a whole lot of work on the, the warehouse kind of proportion of the windows and that's used throughout the on the facade, but also throughout the fit out. 
Um, we tested a whole series of these brick, different brick patterns. We ended up using a, a rain skin brick um, product, which was um, a corium. So it's a it's a it's an actual brick, but it's mechanically fixed, so it's not just um, set into the concrete. Um, there were some prototypes that we did of the bricks. We tested a lot of it. Sorry, it's just frozen again. Um, it's really important with the large floor plates to bring natural light into the space. So the atrium is a key element of the design with a skylight at the top and it connects all the way down to the ground. We also were keen to get natural light into spaces that don't necessarily normally have it natural light. So the lift cores have natural light, the toilets have natural light on the east. So everywhere you stand in that floor plate, you can kind of see natural light. That's the stair that runs all the way up through the from the ground to level six. Um, we've got a smoke curtain at level three to create the different compartments that we needed from a fire safety perspective. But what this does is connect all of the workspace vertically, both from a visual and a physical aspect. And they were very keen for it to feel like one big space. There's lots of outdoor spaces that are created within the, the kind of the fabric of the building. We've got some winter gardens on the east and some great balcony spaces on the west that look back to the city. Um, we've got that ent entry point for SEEK um, which gives them the security that they need, but we can also adapt that and alter the, the lift core so that other tenants could also occupy the building whilst keeping the security for SEEK. And that's what um, is indicated here, that those floors on the south um, could be subdivided with a separate entry through the main centre between the two barns into the lift core that could be subdivided. So we were thinking about the longevity of the building beyond um, SEEK's needs but also if SEEK's needs changed and they needed to sublease space. Um, from an ESD perspective, we tried to kind of just integrate best practice into every part of it. Um, solar panels on the roof are just the same module as the windows that so they appear as um, not, to, not to sort of stand out. Um, and there's just, you know, a whole lot of just normal passive um, sustainability measures put in place to, um, to make it a great building from an indoor air quality perspective, particularly. Um, just some additional images of the atrium and a couple of the external shots there. Um, and then the shot back to the city. So um, they were very keen on, on creating a space that they could mm -hmm. use. Great, thanks. Um, they could get these great views back to the city um, this building is all about SEEK and their people and creating a great, a great space for people to come together and work. Um, it's very adaptable space, so it's been designed these large, big 2,000 square metre planks, as I mentioned, that can be really easily um, changed and, um, and the, the whole interior design was done as a, a kit of parts that could be adapted to change and grow with the organisation as they needed to. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.